his confidence I fly to you today I'm sinful, weak and sorrowful But strong enough to Hello and a very good morning to you. Welcome to Catholics at Home, our live Saturday show today. Yes, we have an interesting topic for you, but first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you. And of course, uh, thank you to Father Patrick Masang and Nicole for opening our podcast today with their beautiful song, The Memorari. Um, yes, like uh, glad you, to have you with us this Saturday morning and thank you for all your uh, wishes this morning uh, on our Facebook page. You know, thank you to Cynthia and uh, Angeline, Kate, thank you so much, Aaron. Now, if you want to engage with us, of course, just type in the comment section and, you know, you know, we'd like to hear from you. And of course, later on, you'll have a chance to also ask your questions to our special guest today. Yes, uh, and also we are streaming on Facebook, Catholics at Home, YouTube, Catholics at Home, and also ArchKL. So why don't you just share this link out to your family and friends because our topic today is about sacred scripture and of course this will interest uh, most of you if not all of you i know many people have been uh, setting uh, some resolutions at the start of the year to be more uh, to read more of the bible and to be more in touch with sacred scripture so today's topic might be just something that you know you want to watch and listen to all right so first of all thank you all for coming on board and as usual you know, i'd like to welcome my co-host for the Clarence Devadas. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Father. Happy nice New Year to you. you. Haven't seen Happy you since New the year beginning year. of the year. <laughs> exactly. You know, enjoying our Christmas break, <laughs> our New Year break. But now things are starting to get back to normal, or what I should say, the new normal. And you know, it's back to our shows. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How was Christmas and New Year for you? Home? 
with mom it was, family it was at home uh, yes you know we didn't have uh, too many people uh, coming over as previous years uh, not only on our request but also everybody i think is a bit cautious and it was nice for them to you know just say you know yes you know a couple of people come over you know not too many and you know we'll we'll just do our part i suppose you know numbers are getting crazy but of course we hope to have uh, uh, the better weeks to come and uh, and for are you, you father, to, are you back to work uh, reading news on on the over the over the radio well and that never stopped <laughs> <laughs> even during christmas you know here and there uh yes uh, but that's only a few days in a week so it's all right but what about you father you have uh, started a new podcast yeah kevin that's that's my new year resolution you know <laughs> I, i've been i've been writing my sunday reflections uh you know since i think 20 2010 i think you know mm -hmm. uh, so i thought maybe you know something new something different uh to try after we have been doing this audio, this video podcast i thought let let me try uh with the help of some friends who have been nudging me so mm -hmm. i'm trying out yeah so i'm trying out to do this this weekly uh audio reflection because if, in text form you get you need a screen to read well uh, yeah. in an audio podcast you can actually listen wherever you're traveling not that you can travel anywhere now but you know you can yeah. you can be lying in bed and turning on yeah so it's available on spotify it's available on uh on google podcasts uh still waiting for some approvals from uh, from apple podcast uh, mm -hmm. a little bit more stringent and yeah, so what so is it called it's called i have always called it preaching and you are sleeping that's a common <laughs> problem we find in church <laughs> you know people seem seem to kind of shut off during the homily so i thought ah okay so maybe right. this is a nice uh, title to say uh, so you you get to yeah so it's it's uh, that the, the link is there uh you can mm -hmm. go to that link and listen uh, so I try and upload it on on Saturday night, uh, so that we have it for Sunday morning. Yeah. So hopefully, with this start, I'm still learning a lot of new things. You know, doing audio editing. Uh, so I, I've picked up some skills during the MCO. You know, wow. the internet wow. is a great it's a great teaching tool. I think you know we learn so many skills. You know, mm -hmm. so I've learned some skills uh, using different tools to see how to do this, how to do that. You know. Mm. Uh, the only thing I, I've not done on, on, on YouTube or learned is how to cook. I've stayed away from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a priest of many talents. I'm sure that will come someday. I remember you telling that you cook a lot of pasta when you were back in Rome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You must ask our guest. Our guest today was, was we were together in Rome and yeah, we used to, you know, occasionally meet and I don't know whether you called it cooking, but we managed to whip up something that that tasted like being home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of our guest today, uh, first of all, let me just uh, let our viewers know that our topic today uh, is developing a closer relationship with sacred scripture. And this is because uh, on the 30th of September in 2019, Pope Francis established that the third Sunday in ordinary time, uh, which for Clarence that would be next Sunday, right? is That's to be right. the Sunday of the Word of God. And the purpose is to reawaken in the church the importance and value of sacred scripture for the Christian life, as well as the relationship between the Word of God and the liturgy. And I suppose, uh, you know, some might be wondering, if it's next Sunday, then why didn't we do this show next Saturday? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just guessing that may, maybe we were giving uh, our viewers about a week to dust off <laughs> their bibles <laughs> or at least find the bible <laughs> no just a light-hearted joke there but uh yes you know at least it gives us one week to prepare for the word of god sunday and of course you know to start to you know yes uh, get in touch with you know father clarence uh starting of the year you know on my whatsapp groups i've had you know quite a few people are saying that you know they wanted to start a bible study and and you know that, that's their resolution and there's a lot of programs out there a lot of programs out there uh, to encourage people to to start uh, reading the bible and i think most of us also at the start of the year will be okay this year is going to be the year i'm going to finish the bible <laughs> until we get to leviticus but <laughs> anyway <laughs> Anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let me bring on our guest today, Father Clarence. Uh, today we have the Right Reverend Richard Ng, Bishop of the Diocese of Miri, born in Kuching, Malaysia in 1966 and was ordained a priest in 1995. He holds a licensure in sacred scriptures from the Biblicum Rome and has served 
in a number of roles, including parish vicar of the Cathedral of Kuching, lecturer in sacred scriptures in the major of, uh, seminary of Kuching, and director of the Archdiocesan Commission for Social Communication. So, uh, Bishop, really glad to have you on the show today. I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about regarding to sacred scripture. How are you doing there, Bishop? Good. Thank you for inviting me. I hope our conversation will be uh, fruitful and uh, we can share some ideas. So I'm pleased to make it today. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Also, our guest today is uh, Father Andy Lee from the parish of St. Anthony in Bintulu. Yeah, I moved there from a rural parish in Lapo. Uh, he's a Miri boy, ordained in 2001, studied in Rome 2003 to 2008. Father Andy, good morning to you and thank you for being on our podcast today. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me as well. Uh, yeah, I've, this is a new parish for me, so I'm in the midst of uh, settling down here, getting to know the people. Uh, I'm glad I have uh, time to share with you what I have experienced of the Word of God. Mm. And also, uh, Father Clarence, as for uh, Father Andy and uh, also uh, Bishop um, being in, in the areas where there's a lot of... Uh, we were talking just before the show about uh, the experience of uh, how, how um, rural folks uh, would, would, uh, uh, would encounter the word and also how they go about uh, you know, having mass and all that. Maybe you want to talk a bit about that, Father Clarence? Yeah, I mean, we were having this conversation about, you know, I think in, in Miri, a lot of places are accessible at least from what i hear you know you have to take a, a, a an off-road track to get uh to get to people and and bishop was saying that you know in some places you park and then you take the the boat up the river to meet the people uh yeah maybe we ask uh yeah uh for the andy who's been working in, in in the interior how how is it like for the i mean we here in the in, in west malaysia everything is accessible by by proper roads uh how is it in the interior i mean people in terms of uh you know having to have community celebrations on Sunday. Right. Uh, uh, before coming to Bintulu, I was serving in uh, Lapo. Lapo is a very challenging parish because the number of outstations I have is about 80, uh, 80 villages. And uh, there are three of us, so we have to travel. Uh, and for most of them, they get mass maybe once a month or even once in two months because we cannot go to all the places every Sunday. Uh, so that's the first challenge. Second challenge is uh, how to get there. Uh, the furthest uh, outstation from the uh, uh, parish church is about uh, one and a half hours on uh, Timber Road for uh, using a uh, four-wheel drive. And after that, another hour or another hour and a half using boat uh, upstream. So the total uh, number of uh, uh, hours we get there, about three hours to the longhouse. So that is the challenge there. And another challenge is also language uh, because many of our, our outstations are uh, many different tribes, uh, many different languages. So we, we depend a lot on catechists uh, because I'm Chinese. Uh, I speak, I can speak Iban, uh, Kenya maybe a little bit, Barawan maybe a little bit uh, here and there. But that's why we depend a lot on catechists, prayer leaders to help us uh, share the word of God because uh, Obviously, we need help uh, in spreading because of the language barrier. Uh, yeah, I think that's about. Uh, I think most of the the, the challenge that we face there in a parish like uh, like Lapo. Mm. So I guess a totally people, a different experience, yeah. 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 Like us in the urban areas, uh, you know, at least before MCO, we got mass every Sunday, and not just one. We have so many masses uh, on a Sunday. So you see that a different side of the church. Uh, we are in Malaysia, and a different side. Bishop, how often do you get to go to visit all these villages? I try to visit uh, every parish twice a year. And every time I go to a parish, I will go to a different longhouse for mass, uh, besides being in the parish church. So last year, not last year, 2019, I look at my log. I think I travel more than 20,000 kilometers. Uh, just visiting, uh, I think I made, I don't know how many, for out of 54 weeks, we were out by about 40 weekends a year. And um, it, it's a joy because the people are very happy to see, see you there. And uh, they're very uh, generous and hospitable. They welcome you. Uh, 
it's also a challenge because uh, language, um, transport, transport, and uh, also lack of basic facilities like electricity. Um, many longhouses do not have electricity, they are off the grid, so they depend on either solar or generator, which is very expensive. So there are a lot of challenges there. And also, um, many of the young people, in, uh, people are not in the longhouses anymore. They have moved to towns and cities to work. So usually it's the old people and young children. Uh, so these are some of the challenges. And also financial resources there. Yeah. Well, well, today we we I said as Kevin introduced earlier, we are talking about the Sunday of the Word of God. You know, um, as you know, I mean, you have been involved in the regional uh, biblical commission in in many ways. Uh, prior to Pope Francis uh, announcing this, we used to have Bible Sunday, and I think it's it, July, right? Uh, mm -hmm. July. You know, we talk a little bit about you know what was the significance of Bible Sunday and how is it different now that we are moving towards this Sunday of the Word of God. A little bit for our listeners to understand. Uh, what was that all about? Actually, Bible Sunday uh, was an initiative from the Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. And uh, we introduced it like over 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago. Uh, so we said we will establish a Sunday every year uh, to give, uh, to remind the people of the importance of the Word of God. So every year, the Bible Commission will release a message and some uh, activities like you know, Bible studies or uh, things like that to, to help the people, uh, to remind the people to read the Word of God. And we are very happy that in 2019, Francis, uh, the Universal Church has declared or set aside the third Sunday of Ordinary Time uh, specifically for Sunday of the Word of God. So that means it's a universal recognition by the Church of the importance and centrality of the Word of God. So I think we are moving in the right direction. Yes, but I suppose, uh, Bishop, if I can just add on, um, why suddenly i mean not suddenly but why in 2019 you think uh, you know the Pope announced that we should have a word of god sunday is there something to do with the culture uh, that we are not really um, um reading the bible enough or knowing sacred scripture enough i think the pope our pope anyway is one who listen to the people is very close to the people so there have been uh, many conferences and uh, biblical commissions requesting the um, policy to dedicate a Sunday a year to the Word of God. So I think that is in response to the request of the people. Hmm. And so uh, I guess uh, from my understand, so we have also now moved uh, Bible Sunday uh, to to coincide with uh, uh, Sunday of the Word of God. So we have one celebration at the beginning of the year. Ah uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, with the Sunday of the Word of God, um, I mean, there's no more Bible Sunday. <laughs> it's, it's merged into one. No? So, yeah, yeah. On, on your side, uh, I mean, are there any activities being planned, uh, Bishop, in terms of in the diocese for the Sun, the Word of God? Are, are you all doing anything? I know there are a lot of restrictions. I know you said some of your churches are closed, but are, are there something being planned out? Uh, first of all, we will disseminate the message from the uh, Regional Biblical Commission. And uh, then they will, uh, there's a list of recommendations like enthronement, and um, commissioning the the readers and lectors and uh, Bible quiz if possible. But for Miri, uh, since we are in a red zone, we cannot have any activities in church. So everything is uh, online. So uh, I would say uh, not much initiative this year due to this pandemic. 
Well, since our, our show is entitled Developing a Closer Relationship with Sacred Scripture, I think Kevin was mentioning earlier, uh, a lot of Catholics, you know, at the, at the turn of a new year, always have this resolution, you know, I want to read the Bible. And somehow the resolution is to read from, from Genesis to Revelation, you know, it's like from, from page one right up to whatever page it ends. And somewhere along the way, as Kevin pointed out, by the time you get to Deuteronomy, Leviticus, like you're, you're, you're already, you know, kind of given up. What would you say to people, you know, who, who started the year, who wanted to you know, read the Bible? What can they do? I mean, what can, what, what can Catholics do uh, to, to keep the resolution or at least to start something? We're still at the beginning of the year uh, if they want to get to know the scriptures. I, I would suggest you don't start at the beginning. <laughs> uh, start with the Gospel of Mark. That's my recommendation because the Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels and uh, it introduced us to the person of Christ, uh, the person of Jesus. So for, for those who wish to read the Word of God and get to know more about Christ, the, I would highly recommend that they read the Gospel of Mark. It's simple, straightforward, and uh, easy to understand. And also, is um, it will bring about an encounter with the person of Christ. Who is Christ? Yeah. So that's my recommendation. Hmm. And also, uh, Father Clarence, uh, you know, talking about getting through the the difficult uh, books or letters in the Bible. You know, one of the reasons is because we probably don't really understand what the author was trying to write because he's writing in his time. And I suppose for newbies or, you know, people just starting to read the Bible, you know, they might just question like, why are we, why are we reading this? You know, this, this things happened like thousands of years ago. So, uh, uh, you know, I suppose the question would be, why is sacred scripture important in that sense that we are reading what events happened thousands of years ago? You know, we're not just talking about the events uh, of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, but, you know, about other people, you know. So how can we, we start to introduce them to, to, to all these stories, the significance of all these uh, stories in the Bible? That's Bishop Richard. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, the centrality of the Bible is always the person of Christ. Uh, that's the whole purpose. So the Old Testament is actually a preparation for the coming of Christ. And uh, it was written or thousand years uh, to be composed. And uh, whereas the New Testament, of course, is a highlight because Christ has arrived. And uh, his words, his deeds, uh, his thing and so on were recorded by various people. So we are actually not, uh, I believe it's not a uh, history such. We are not just reading um, like events that happened long time ago, it's just like history. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's a living book. Because uh, we believe that the Bible was inspired or is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's uh, not just the work of man, but it's also the work of God. It's the principal work of God. Man is just the instrument, the human instrument. So God speaks to us uh, as he spoke to the inspired writers of the Old Testament and the New Testament. So when we are reading the Old Testament or the New Testament, God continues to speak to us and inspire us. It's the Holy Spirit at work. So we are not just reading a historical record like, uh, or like going to a museum, uh, looking back at things that happened a long, long time ago. Uh, because God still speaks to us today through the events in our lives, helping us to understand the Word of God in a different perspective now. So it's a living word. It's not just a dead word. You know, you're talking about talking about reading the Old Testament. One of the questions that I often get asked uh, is, you know, why is there so much of violence in the Old Testament? You know, uh, and how do we reconcile that as as the Word of God? I'm sure you you get asked that, you know, in your in your when you were teaching in the seminary and you know when you were doing Bible sessions, you know, 
uh, how, how do we how do we reconcile that you know uh, um you know violence uh, evil sin these are all manifestation of our, our fallen state eh? so the bible is recording um history or recording events uh, as they are and uh, giving them an uh, interpretation uh, so it does not mean that our god is a violent god or he condone uh, violence and but that's that's the way uh, our ancestors live if you look at the old testament some of the stories of abraham and so on he went to war and uh, or the conquest of uh, the promised land and how the Joshua and the people were asked to kill or exterminate all the native inhabitants of the land. So we have to respect the mentality, the culture, and the context of that time. So it does not mean that uh, our God is a God of violence. Uh, we do have to understand the historical context. Yeah, thanks, uh, Bishop. I think you know that that throws a bit of light to a lot of people who have difficulty in in trying to reconcile that part. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, of course, in the New Testament is is a lot easier to to read. And I, I share the similar sentiment. I think if people start with the Old Testament, uh, somehow either they give up or they get disillusioned. But to start with the New Testament, that gives you a kind of a little bit of understanding of also the Old Testament. And I think that's. I that's suppose, a uh, Father Clarence, if I can just follow up with that, because you know, when when like Bishop is explaining, um, uh, answering that question, so for us adults, we can understand. Oh yes, you know, it is their time, it's their culture and stuff. But what about children? You know, when we are reading the stories of children, and if a, a young boy or girl comes and asks you that question, you know, about the violence, are they able to understand uh, the response that uh, something like what Bishop gave? How do we explain that to children? Who have questions about so much of violence in the Bible? Yeah, yeah I, we have to tell them the truth, no? That our God <laughs> is a God of love. He never condones violence and uh, evil as a means to achieve anything. So we just have to explain in simple ways that uh, our God asks us to love and forgive and make peace and so on. And uh, you know, try try to look at uh, explain it from that point of view, uh, the, mm. I think the truth. Uh, and I'm not try to go into the technicalities of uh, the historical aspect of the time, the context, and so on. I think they will understand the truth. Yeah, per perhaps we, we ask for the Andy. For the Andy is, uh, yeah. I guess, doing this all the time, you know. Uh, for the Andy, you, you, I, I'm told that you do a kind of a, a, a weekly reflection to help people, uh, especially the communities that do not have masks. Uh, the work that you do. Uh, tell us a little bit about the work that you do in terms of uh, preparing the Word of God for communities that uh, have to celebrate uh, without the priest, in the absence of a priest. Uh, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, I would uh, have formation with them, uh, basic Bible uh, seminar. So just to get a, uh, give them a brief uh, tour of the Bible, especially uh, salvation history. I think that's what's the why we have uh, Old Testament, New Testament, because of the connection. So at least they, they know a little bit about the covenants, a little bit about who Abraham was, Moses, uh, Joshua, David, and how are they connected with Jesus. Um, and after that, I, I will help them to, uh, to read the Bible uh, prayerfully, uh, to start with reading, uh, much like the, the, the format of Lexio Divina, to start reading, and then after that, read again, until uh, they they find words, keywords, uh, key phrases, then then develop on that. Then after that, bring them uh, to see what is the meaning behind the text. And so I will prepare a sort of a weekly reflection for them, giving uh, them tools to see for themselves uh, what is the keyword in the first reading, uh, in the response to the psalm, uh, in the second reading, and 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 ultimately, of course, in the gospel, uh, so that. Uh, my my approach is uh, like the the phrase uh, the saying, uh, "Give me a fish, I eat for one day. Teach me how to fish, I eat for one lifetime." Huh? So I'm I'm slowly training the the prayer leaders or the catechists uh, 
to have these tools so that they themselves can go fish. Huh? They themselves can go and find well, what is God telling the people of that particular longhouse at that time. Huh? So, so that is my, my approach. My approach is not to give them uh, my reflection, but rather to help them uh, develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit, like what the bishop said. It is the Holy Spirit who is the principal author. In order for us to, uh, to understand what is God saying, we need the Holy Spirit. So I'm bringing that into the, the spiritual formation of each one of them so that they themselves can cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit and in turn, uh, able to read, uh, to understand, to interpret what is God telling them uh, when they read the sacred scripture. So you prepare this every week and you send it out to them? Uh, I prepare in, uh, uh, in installments. For example, I prepared until uh, uh, Sunday before Ash Wednesday. They are prepared uh, Lent and Easter, one installment, and Ordinary Time until Christ the King, one installment. So I'm doing that. So I've gone through uh, uh, almost three years. So hopefully I'll compile, I'll edit properly so that we get a year, year A, B, and C for them. Uh, with the hope that they themselves can do that, uh, to find the keywords, the themes. I think, for example, this coming Sunday, I think uh, why you chose the podcast today, because tomorrow, first reading, uh, the call of Samuel, yeah. speak, Lord, your servant is listening, uh, so that the keyword is there. Uh, I pointed out to them, and uh, and the, the response was, um, uh, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And the glossary, the glossary will be about the call, the calling, and so it is, uh, it's all connected. So I help them to just uh, nudge them a bit so that then the Holy Spirit can do the rest uh, to help them read and interpret the Word of God. Are these resources available uh, online for, for our viewers if they wanted it? Uh, online, not yet. Uh, it's, it's all uh, mainly for uh, prayer leaders, mainly uh, hard copies uh, so that they are able to do that in the long houses. Maybe in the future, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Father Andy, that. if I could just ask, uh, because you just mentioned about you mentioned about uh, self reflection with scripture and you know interpreting, um, you know biblical interpretation can sometimes cause like confusion or problems. So you know when when one is 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 uh, interpreting the scriptures, you know I don't know whether it can be dangerous if that's the word I can use. But you know should we be uh, doing this alone or with groups? Uh, what's your advice? I think uh, my advice is uh, I always remember the criteria I think we're having some uh, connection issues yeah I think he's cut off mm. Bishop Richard yeah, you want to take over yeah, with, yeah, with sure. issue interpretation yeah I mean um, we are free everyone is free to interpret as long as it does not touch on uh, articles of faith or moral so that's the teaching of the church and um, if you compare pre-vatican that is uh, pre-1906 1960 or something and post-vatican II, uh, you can see a marked change uh, Pre-Vatican II, the laity were not encouraged to read the Word of God, especially in the 17th, 18th centuries. They were not encouraged to own a Bible because of the fear that they would uh, interpret the Bible according to their own understanding and have a wrong interpretation. So that was the fear. But post-Vatican II uh, is totally different. Huh? Is uh, We encourage the... Uh, Lady to read, meditate, reflect on the word of God, and the Holy Spirit will speak to them. So whatever interpretation is uh, for private consumption. So you cannot impose your interpretation of scripture on another person. But of course, uh, private interpretation is good, it's personal, it's for your spiritual growth. But it has always to be guided by the uh, teaching authority of the church. Uh. I think uh, that's the basic rule. Uh. Whatever, however we interpret the word of God, it must be in line with the teaching authority of the church. You know, I, I, I remember in the seminary, I don't know whether I still remember that. You know, there are different criteria for, for interpretation. There is a, you, you have to help me along, Bishop. You are the 
expert. That's the literal. That's the literal translation. That's the historical translation. Uh, yeah, that's as far as I go. Then after that, it is, you know. Uh, that's a technical part of it. Yeah, the but it, the thing is, it's it, there isn't one one model that can be applied throughout because you know I mean a lot of people try to do the literal trans uh, interpretation. That's where I think we get muddled into difficulties. Uh, doing without understanding the context of the time. I think the best is uh, just do a spiritual reading, uh, you know, for your own spiritual growth. Uh, don't don't be uh, caught up with all the technical points, huh? but do your own like lectio divina and uh, just you read and meditate and reflect. And one point is good enough. Whatever text or message you read, just take away one or two points. Just for your personal growth, I think that's the best. Mm -hmm. Leave the homilies and so on to the priest and to the expert. <laughs> uh, Father Andy, glad to have you back. Uh, sorry, we lost you uh, yeah, earlier. Yeah, sorry about that. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Please do. Uh, if you can start over with your response just now, that'll be great. Um. Yeah. What was the question already? I forgot. <laughs> uh, about biblical interpretation and, um, you know, when we are self-reflecting on the scriptures. Oh, yes. I think because we as Catholics, we have uh, uh, a rich tradition of biblical interpretation. Uh, that is to read scripture within the heart of the church because that's where scripture came from. Before uh, scripture was uh, the written word, there was oral tradition. So we can say that uh, the church uh, gives us the scripture. So scripture came from the church. So so that's why uh, we cannot read scripture uh, with our own agenda, with our own interpretation. Uh, rather, it is to read the uh, scripture within the heart of the church. That is through liturgy, through the church fathers, and then through the teachings of the church. Uh, I think the criteria that the CCC gave us, uh, the unity and content of scripture, uh, the analogy of faith, and the living tradition. So I, th I think many many Catholics maybe are not familiar with this or do not apply this. We have a rich tradition, so it's like the whole package. Yeah? We don't uh, we don't compartmentalize scripture. Okay, I'm reading scripture only as a as an exercise here, and there's no connection with others. So I think the Catholic mentality is that it is all uh, one whole package because it is the Holy Spirit that moves uh, within the church and uses scripture sort of uh, to be the soul. Uh, to be the animator, no? because uh, I think like what Bishop said just now also, it's about relationship, knowing who Jesus is. And that is, I think, the, the, the real purpose of sacred scripture, that is uh, to know who God is, who Jesus is, and to know what is his will, or what does God want from us. Um, I, think, I think that's why while uh, personal uh, reading, spiritual is important, no? because God speaks to us personally uh, uh, to address certain issues in our life, but at the same time, God speaks to everyone, to the whole church, to the whole world. And so, so that's why uh, personal reading is, uh, is important. But at the same time, uh, reading as a group, in cell group, helps to build one another, especially for those who are just beginning and then for those who have uh, familiarized with scripture. So there's a support system when you read as a group, uh, a cell group, uh, even in the BEC, and at the same time, uh, you go to church, uh, you hear scripture being proclaimed and taught. So it's like a whole a whole tradition there. No? I think we are part of this tradition and it's a very rich tradition that I think many of us do not, uh, are not aware of that or do not do that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you talk, talk, yeah. Talk, talking about, uh, you know, talking about trying to understand uh, the word of God, um, yeah, so I think here there's a question here. Uh, maybe I address this to to Bishop Richard, you know, from Aaron. Uh, how to experience uh, the the risen Lord? I mean, uh, in this proclamation of the word. Maybe I I will connect it uh, in in this way. Uh, you know, when we go to mass, you know, uh, the importance of the liturgy of the word. Uh, what what can we what can we do to to enhance that experience? You know, of uh, of the liturgy of the word. Uh, before getting to mass, you know, for example, for a lot of for a lot of people that the Sunday mass, it's the first time they're hearing the reading, and you know, and you, sometimes you don't get everything. What can you do to you know to enhance that experience of celebrating the liturgy of the word in mass at mass? 
I think one way is a good preparation uh, before mass or before the weekend. You can always uh, refer to some reflection of the text, or you can go through the passage uh, for the coming Sunday. And uh, there are a lot of uh, short commentaries and reflection out there. So it's good if you can uh, just spend five ten minutes reflecting on the central message. And uh, so when we get to Mass, we'll be hearing uh, the Word of God being proclaimed and we have already made our own uh, preparation. So in that way, uh, so we, I think the message would stick to our mind. And uh, the important thing is uh, we, we go out and share this message. Uh, not just share, but also put it into practice. And leave it out. So I suppose we can uh, allow the, the, the risen Christ to work in and through us. Uh, after encountering the word of God, we, we go out and try to live it or practice it or to share it. No, I mean, talking to Father Andy and listening to him about, you know, when you have uh, communities that, that have a, a celebration uh, without the priest, you know, um, a lot of times, I think the, the perception is that the centrality of the Mass is, is the liturgy of the Eucharist. But equally, there's also the, the centrality of the liturgy of the Word. Uh, in, in, sometimes that, that gets uh, you know, uh, underplayed. Uh, how does it work in, in, in remote communities uh, when they celebrate the liturgy of the word? Uh, what, what do they do? Uh, and I'm not too sure. I, I guess there's no Holy Communion for them on that, on that Sunday when the priest is not there. Yeah. Right. So, so how does the, the liturgy of the word nourish them in the same way as someone who's, you know, who's having the full Eucharist from your experience? Uh, from my experience, uh Yes, we are known in the Eucharist, there's Liturgy of the Word, Liturgy of the Eucharist. Uh, I think someone said, Liturgy of the Word is the Word inspired. Liturgy of the Eucharist is the Word incarnate. So it's the same Jesus who is present in the Word. So uh, when they celebrate the Sunday liturgy, uh, so they focus more on the Liturgy of the Word, where the readings, uh, or before that, they come in and they have sort of like an enthronement of uh, the Word of God. Uh, so. To, to give the centrality of the primacy of the Word of God in the in the Sunday celebration. So they bring the Bible in, so they have a sort of a, a place uh, 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 to enthrone it, a uh, prominent place so that the, the focus is there on the, on, the, on the Word of God. And after that, they'll do the readings and then uh, they'll, they'll do the reflections, they read the reflections. And, uh, and after that, they'll pray the Psalms. Uh, we are following a, a format uh, that is standardized throughout the diocese. Uh, sort of like Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving, so we use Psalms for that. So we can say that uh, the Sunday liturgy of the Word for them is, is packed with uh, the Word of God in, in order to help them uh, internalize uh, uh, the Word of God, the sacred scripture in the Sunday celebration. Uh, so uh, uh, because that is what uh, they do. And, and uh, beside that, on Sunday, uh, so other days, uh, they will have a cell group or they will have... Uh, a communal gathering of where they read the word of God personally and they share with one another. So more of like a, a spiritual nourishment uh, during the weekdays. Huh? And uh, and we give them uh, guides uh, to help them uh, read. Uh, uh, I've, I've already uh, written a book, uh, a guidebook uh, based on the Gospel of Mark. And we have been doing this uh, uh, for the past few years already to help them uh, read uh, one or two verse each day, and then some question for reflection. So we, we have been doing that for for past few years already in our diocese. I think that's uh, wonderful, uh, Father Clarence, uh, how they do it there, uh, over there. And for any, I was just wondering, um, how is the participation of the youth in this kind of, uh, in, in you know, meeting up and, you know, reading the Bible and talking about it? How is the participation of the youth over there? I think it uh, it depends because uh, for the past six years I was in a, a rural parish, huh? so youth in the longhouse, like what Bishop mentioned, uh, they're very uh, few huh? uh, because they're all in a boarding school, uh, and then uh, so youth participation is mostly uh, when they're in the secondary school or boarding uh, school, huh? 
So sometimes we have, uh, uh, they, they come to church for doing holidays. Uh, so we have seminars for them, stay in seminars for them, where we teach them how to read the Word of God, how to share the Word of God. And in, in many schools, uh, we have uh, prayer meetings uh, where they lead uh, the, the, the praise and worship, and then they have, uh, someone will give a sharing on the Word of God. And, uh, and, and so that is the participation of, uh, well, the, the youth in my parish, uh, uh, Lapo, uh, rural parish. So that's why I think it depends on whether it's rural or urban. Uh, yeah. So youth uh, participation is, is like that in my parish. I don't know about the other parishes, perhaps a little bit different. Uh, yeah. And just uh, thank you for that, Father Andy. I'd uh, just like to remind the viewers, you know, uh, if you have any questions for Father Andy or for Bishop Richard, uh, please do write them in the comment section. I think we have a few questions coming in already uh, for our guests today. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you put them in the comment section so we can ask uh, Bishop or Father Andy about it. King has a question. Uh, Since God is universal, why did he pick Jews as the chosen race in the Old Testament? Bishop, you want to answer that? Have to ask God. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my answer too. <laughs> the top question. Uh. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes I, I, I casually say, you know, it's 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 middle it's, it's the middle of, of of everything it's the middle between the east the middle between the west god chose right in the center uh in the, in the middle east well i mean that's not the exact answer but you know just fully i say that but you know but yeah maybe we ask god why why he didn't come here and he went somewhere else but i think uh, i mean the jews are a very small group huh? a very insignificant and uh, tiny nation so God always choose the weak and the small to shame the strong and the wise. I, I think uh, this is also the direction of uh, Pope Francis. He always go to the fringe of society. Thank you. So, Kang, you've got a few options there for, as for your answer to the question. I hope one of those at least would satisfy the question. Uh, Augustine, journey to Christmas with St. Luke session was a good venue to share the Luke gospel. Any initiative to organize similar online session by clergy this year? Uh, Father Clarence, was that only in the uh, Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur? Yeah, but I think that was that was broadcasted uh, through to, to different channels. I think it was accessible to mm -hmm. many people. Uh, I, I think that, I, I guess, you know, there are many programs out there uh, accessible during this time, especially uh, in this, you know, pandemic. Uh, about Bible programs that people could people could choose, people could uh, follow uh, at their own convenience. Uh, I think uh, you know it's just going out there and looking for the right ones. Uh, I can't think of any offhand at the moment. Uh, I didn't, uh, Richard or Father Andy, do you know of any other programs people could could go join? Uh, I mean, during this time uh, to follow uh, online programs to follow the Bible. Online, I wouldn't know, um, but if uh, there are the, the regional biblical commission has been organizing uh, Bible courses uh, for the last 20 years, maybe 17, 18 years, and I've been doing that, I'm still doing that. Uh, so if there is a group uh, in your parish or in the diocese, I think uh, you can join. So it's a good opportunity. It's a structured class uh, once a week and so on. So you go through the whole Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament in about three to four years. Um, but I think there are many online courses. But definitely the, the comment just now uh, gave me an idea that we can do something similar in a local uh, circle. Uh, that uh, special time like Christmas and Easter uh, we can just pick on one part of the gospel, like the passion narrative and so on, and try to emphasize. I, I, I thank the viewer for that comment. This is a good idea, I think. Yeah, thank you, Augustine. And also, I think in the comments, I, I saw someone posting that uh, her church was also organizing some Bible programs. So I, I suppose for those watching, uh, 
first thing you should do is actually contact your parish because you know your parish might be organizing something and maybe you don't know maybe you're not on whatsapp everybody's on whatsapp now <laughs> so you know just contact your parish and find out you know they may have something that they are starting off and you can be a part of it as well so yeah please contact your parish first and then uh, look for online uh, programs if, uh, if you have any questions uh, please do put them in the comment section we still have bishop richard and also for the andy with us uh, till at least 11 30. so let's see if we have any more comments blaze could we have some recommendations for reference to learn about our faith through bible books or websites Father Andy, you want to start with this? Um, I think there are a few uh, websites uh, that the Regional Biblical Commission uh, will include in uh, this year's uh, message on uh, Word of God Sunday. So in uh, at the end of the message, uh, there are some uh, uh, websites that you can uh, check out uh, as uh, good resources uh, for uh, developing uh, a greater knowledge of the Word of God. I think uh, there are a few there. Uh, uh, please check it out. Uh, I think it, sh it should be at the end of the message for Word of God Sunday. I'd like to add uh, a very simple but good investment is to buy a student edition or study edition of the Bible because of the footnotes. So uh, they have a lot of footnotes to explain uh, difficult passages or sentences. And uh, I find that very useful. So if you can afford, do buy a study edition uh, of the Bible, preferably a Catholic edition, or they call it student edition. And those that have footnotes are very helpful. Uh, Bishop, if I can ask, uh, since we're talking about websites and online programs, you know, uh, when there's a lot of them out there, you know, some of them might not be aligned. We think they're aligned with the Catholic faith, but they're not. Uh, any advice on how we can uh, determine or, you know, how, how should we be, uh, how should we approach this and how to be careful? I suppose you, you look at the content, no? uh, and uh, if there are, I mean, if they don't teach us uh, to go against the teaching of the Catholic Church, I suppose that is okay. Uh, I, I don't believe that there are many uh, online resources that are very, that are not good for us. I think all of them, um, one way or another, they promote the Word of God. I don't know if they have any hidden agenda, but generally, I think for personal growth, reflection, um should should be all right now all right thank you thank you bishop what I, 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 yeah I, I think you know uh like what bishop said you know to be able to invest in a bible i think that's very important uh to get the right one you know a study bible uh, there are many out there uh, that they can get uh, i've seen quite a few and i think that is a good investment especially to get uh a good good bible um i mean I, I don't want to to promote one over the other uh not that uh, uh but i think there, there are so many out there that you can you can get uh, i myself use a couple of them uh to be able to to read understand and i, and I think it's ongoing isn't it bishop uh, father andy even for us priests i mean you know there, there are many things that you know we also you know learn as we go along you know as we prepare for our homily as we prepare for for talks you know we have new insights too, uh, so you know it's it's not a one-time reading. It's not a it's not a static reading, but it's a very dynamic reading. That you know today you read this, uh, you look at it this way. Uh, you read it another another Sunday, the same passage. Uh, it speaks to you in a different way, and I think that is the openness that that we all need to be able to to have with with the Word of God, and I think that's what makes it personal, isn't it, Bishop? I mean is that, like you said, I mean, whatever interpretation, the primary recipient of that interpretation is myself. You know, it's, it's, it's not meant for me to go and say, hey, the Bible says this and you're not doing this, you're not doing that. You know, it's, you know, we have, uh, you know, there's always the temptation to to do that, isn't it? To point, point it out to other people, you know. But I think that's... Uh, the Bible is a fountain that we cannot empty. <laughs> Even though we are so thirsty, we cannot rain that long term. So 
or God's words is so rich that eh? every time we encounter it, eh, it, it can give us a different perspective. Um, let me just say a few words about the different versions of the Bible. If it's for personal spiritual reading, uh, any any edition would be good. Maybe a good use Bible is very simple, and the language is simple huh? and uh, it's friendly. So for just for your own edification or spiritual growth, you can read any uh, good news Bible. But for study wise, if you want a better interpretation, I would suggest uh, the new revised R NRSV, new, new revised standard version, um, or the New American Bible, or the New Jerusalem Bible. So these three are, are very good and um, they are um, uh, recommended uh, for more serious studies, especially the student edition. But for general reading, uh, I think Good News Bible is uh, good enough. Or for Bahasa speaking, the the best I found is uh, ABB, Alkitab Versi Borneo. Alkitab Versi Borneo. All right. Thank you for that, uh, Bishop. And thank you for also pointing out the difference uh, for those who want to just have a read of the Bible and those who want to study the Bible because you know for some people when they pick out the Bible they feel oh, like they have to study it <laughs> but you don't have to you can also just read it and you know for your uh, personal reflection and thank you for pointing that out I suppose uh, uh, it's almost yeah, I, think it's just, I think the important point is so consistency of reading uh, you know I think it's something that you know we should cultivate uh, in our lives and I think today, you know, with so many mobile apps are available, you know, there's almost uh, uh, no reason that we can give for, for not reading uh, the Word of God or at least exploring it. You know, I think technology has afforded us so many opportunities. Uh, we use technology to, to connect with people uh, in these times when we are having a lockdown, people from so many parts of the world. I think technology can really can really be utilized. Uh, I'm almost tempted to say the word exploited, but it's not. But in the sense that to engage with God and the Word of God, you know, to look out for some apps, uh, to look out for some guides, you know, that's available. Uh, when you know, when I, I guess you know, like when Bishop Richard, I think Father Andy is a is comes from a much later generation for the Bishop Richard and I, the same generation. When we went to the seminary, there, there wasn't the internet yet, you know, and it wasn't so long ago when we started, you know, we had to rely on on, on libraries and, and books to be physically present in the library to pull out reference books. But today there's there's a, there's a whole, that there's the diversity of what is available uh, is God's gift uh, to be able to use those tools, those gifts that God has given to also nourish our faith, I think that's you know. So, so there's so many, so many out there to remind us to read the Word of God every day, and each one has got a little bit of a reflection, uh, a short reflection for daily. And I think that's something that we need to cultivate. And I think part of the whole reason of of uh, the Pope also you know dedicating a Sunday. It's not that we don't celebrate the Word of God on other Sundays, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, why only this Sunday, somebody asked you, why only this Sunday, Father, why not not every Sunday? I mean, is it, don't we read the Word of God every Sunday? But I think just like celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, you know, we choose one day to remind ourselves of the importance of the Word of God. Yeah, consistency, I think, is, is very important. Thank you, Father Clarence. And, uh, you know, I suppose before we end the show, talking about scripture, you know, we'd like to ask uh, Bishop for the Andy and also for the Clarence, what are your favorite scripture, you know? <laughs> Do you have a particular favorite scripture, book, letter, uh, verse? Matthew 16. <laughs> for me, What's it's that Matthew 16. For God loved the world so much that he gave us his only begotten son. So that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And uh, this is one of the passwords that I use. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I will tell you which, but it's an important password. Very interesting. I suppose I, I just want to ask the viewers out there: How many of you have passwords using scripture, using the the verse? How many of you just type in a comment? I want to know that right now. 
I use all scripture quotes. <laughs> so that you won't forget uh, the password. <laughs> but Andy, what about you? Uh, for me, it's Mark chapter 6, verse 8. Uh, I received this uh, text because uh, that was uh, the, the text that sort of confirmed my calling to be a priest. Uh, so when I read it, it's uh, where Jesus told the disciple, take nothing for your journey, uh, no haversack, uh, no extra tunic, just a staff. Uh, so that, has, uh, that verse is really close to my heart. Uh, from that day onwards, I, I pursued the call to become a priest. And uh, I thank God for speaking to me through this verse. Mm, that's nice. For the clearance? Yeah. Well, uh, well, I've not used it as my password, but you know, uh, for me, I think uh, I, I would always go back. If you ask me, I mean, generally, I, I love the Gospels. And I think the Gospels, uh, every time I read the Gospel, the Sunday Gospel, it gives me a new... Uh, vision, uh, a new angle about the person of Jesus. And I think that's very rich for me. Uh, if, and if you if you corner me uh, and ask me what is my one verse, I think I, I would choose, I, I chose this as my ordination uh, theme too. It's uh, from Paul's uh, second letter to the Corinthians 12, 9. Uh, it's, my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, my power is made perfect through your weakness you know, that comes across. And I think for me that is uh, what that God gives me the grace uh, to fill the cracks in my own life uh, with his grace uh, and then it is in my weakness that god's perfection comes out yeah so for me that has been a, a kind of a verse that has guided me in this 23 years uh, as a priest thank you thank you for the clearance thank you for Andy and also bishop uh, i suppose it's been a very enlightening conversation today and we got to know more not just about scripture but also about uh, how the community in the rural areas, uh, celebrate uh, Mass and also and uh, get in touch with Scripture and, you know, discover the Word of God. So uh, really a very uh, insightful conversation today. Father Clarence, I'd like to thank our guests, uh, Bishop Richard Ng, and also for, the end for joining us today. Uh, any last words, Father Clarence, before yeah, we end? I to thank both of them, you know, uh, just uh, for, for responding when I, when I texted them and they, they responded almost immediately without hesitation. Uh, to say yes, uh, Bishop Richard and I spent four years in Rome together. Uh, he's 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 a, he's a better cook than I am, you know. Uh, <laughs> so next time when we, next time when we go to Miri, we'll get him to cook something for us. Uh, and, Welcome. And and thank for the Andy too. Uh, despite all the challenges of you know trying to connect, uh, thank you very much for for being with us this morning uh, and to share. And and hopefully you know this will inspire people. What we do here is to try and inspire people. Uh, to live their faith uh, better, uh, to be able to, and today is, is about the Word of God and an integral part of it. And and what I'm I'm so touched. Uh, I think for me to to remember is that to remember, you know, all the communities in the rural area that that you know that that kind of nu are nourished by the Word of God, you know, and, and not just not just the mass, which, which is important. I mean, Vatican II says that's the height, that's the climax of of our faith, but. In the absence of a priest, they are so nourished by the word of God, and something that we can learn to here, you know, uh, to be also focused and to be nourished by the word, the liturgy of the word. Yeah. So before we, before we let them go, uh, Bishop, we usually conclude with a prayer. Uh, would you like to lead us in prayer uh, and for our audience too, uh, as we lead up towards uh, the Sunday of the Word of God? Sure. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father God, at this time of pandemic and lockdown, we ask for your help, we ask for your intercession, heal and take away this pandemic, especially protect the vulnerable, the ill, the children, the, the homeless. And uh, we ask that you also protect the frontliners who are helping us to overcome this virus. Lord, we also pray that we have access to a uh, effective vaccine for everyone uh, from the least and the last and we also ask you to bless our effort to promote the word of god may we take a bit of uh, effort to read the word of god and reflect on it and put it practice in our lives and we make this prayer through christ our lord amen 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the prayer, uh, Bishop. 
Uh, before we go, I'd just like to remind our viewers uh, that uh, we have our Willing Hearts uh, Facebook group on our Facebook page. That's where you can uh, send in if you have any uh, uh, business or any gigs that you are doing, uh, you know, anything that you are selling. You can just go to our Facebook page, uh, Willing Hearts by Catholics at Home, and put your post there. You know, tell us uh, what you're selling uh, or your service. How much is it? You know, where do you, which area you cover? And, you know, just put it there and so that we can get a word out and people can share what you're selling, your service to other people. As you know, during this time, uh, some of us, it's really challenging financially and we'd like to help out to our community. So do post your service or your products that you're selling on our Facebook page, Willing Hearts. In fact, uh, next week, we'll be dedicating a show on that. So we'll talk more about that and how you can uh, go about um, selling or your products or service. Right, Father Clarence? Uh, yes, Kevin. So next week, we will talk a little bit about, uh, I think we started this to help people out, especially those who have had to take a, a reduced income or those who have lost their jobs uh, to help them, you know, to initiate something that they can do from homes. Yeah, so do go to, uh, to our, our Facebook page, uh, you know, there's no fee to join, you know, it, this is all just helping one another. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this is the act of love to help one another. So do go to our Facebook page and have a look. I mean, if you have something to offer, some service to offer that you think people would want, uh, please do uh, post it there uh, and uh, the administrators will, will lead you in, in, in the direction. So next next week, yeah, next week, we we'll talk a little bit more about this. So do join us next week, uh, especially if you are thinking of trying to start something from home uh, to supplement your income during this uh, difficult times. Uh, do tune in. Uh, and if you are not, you can also tune in to just Maybe you could advise someone or you could help someone uh, how to, uh, to, to survive or how to get through this, this difficult period. Yeah. And as you prepare for Word of God Sunday, next Sunday, you know, one of the things you can do is, of course, listen to Father Clarence's podcast, preaching, and, <laughs> and you were sleeping. Uh, Father Clarence, what's the topic for this week? Well, I think Father, Father Andy has already said, uh, I think, you know, uh, it's, the, the gospel is about the call. Uh, from John's Gospel, uh, Jesus calling his first disciples. Uh, yeah, so it, I don't want to give up too, give out too much. So you know, to invite them, uh, you can go to that link there. Uh, hopefully, you know, uh, that kind of picks up a little bit to, to wherever you are. I mean, whether in your car, whether you are lying in bed, if you want something to listen to, to have have you help you reflect before you go to mass uh, uh, on a Sunday, an online mass or a physical mass. Uh, these are little tools that are, we are trying to offer to each other. And hopefully, hopefully I'm really hoping that, uh, somehow we can collaborate with father Andy too, to get his stuff online. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, so he said he has a plan, he has a vision. Yeah. So if, you know, if father, you need some assistance, you can always reach out to us and we ask our, 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 our listeners to, to reach out to you to also to post whatever you're doing uh, online because the thing, you know, uh, the resources are plenty and i think it's just finding the right platform to post them right. too so do reach out to us if you if you need some help okay sure we'll, we'll do we'll do definitely great thank you for that uh father clarence uh so once again I'd like to thank uh, our special guests today uh bishop richard ng and also father andy for joining us and also thank you thank all of you for joining us for this conversation uh do have a blessed weekend and also we'll see you next saturday for our live show in the meantime stay safe and uh, stay well bye bye Thank you.